Hello everyone. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and are making some really good trades. Um, this is going to be a nice little update on GME, although the market did not trade today, or maybe the German market traded and, you know, overnight, uh, uh, sorry, overseas market traded. I'm going to actually do some more analysis on GameStop. And I'm going to be talking about why I still think that we, why I still think that we could see some upside. I'm going to be addressing like some comments that people had as well regarding GameStop and to some things that I've said in the past as well, like recently. So I said that uh, I didn't think that there were too many shorts left um, on GameStop. And some people would say like, why would you say that? You know, there's still obviously lots of shorts. And I was like, you know what? I should check into that. Because maybe there is still some shorts, right? Maybe uh, I don't know what I'm talking about here. So I looked into it, right? I looked at the, my BB terminal, open BB terminal. You guys can actually get this yourself. It's free. You know, you can just look it up and uh, you can take a look at dark pool data and short data. <clears throat> and I checked uh, the data. And what's uh, funny enough, I found a significant amount of short volume <laughs> that uh, they're actually like 2.5. What are almost like three billion dollars into short positions now, which I was actually really surprised because I, I thought that maybe, you know, they would have learned their lesson, right? That they would have learned their lesson after, you know, all of this, all of this that happened, right? You know, like that, that big squeeze and. 2020, 2021, and we squeeze, they, they, well, not me, but like they squeeze them all the way up to 120. It looks like they're just, they're going at it again. It's like they've never learned. It's like, yeah, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do it again. <laughs> so I guess they're like $3 billion in, dollars in shorts now, and net short volume was increasing significantly. So they're just, they're just, I guess they're shorting. So, you know. They got a heavy position now. This is recent data. Um, we can you can really zoom in if you want to get a better picture, right? You could just zoom in here, and then you can see, like this was as of uh, uh, sorry June, uh, June fifteen, June sixteen, which is like uh, not too long ago. Or I can get even more more clear. Like June seven, June seventeen, June eighteen. So yeah, like the last couple of days, right? I guess uh, they're at they're at three billion dollars in shorts now. Um, so yeah, maybe we do have to squeeze them again, um, but we'll have to see, uh, because you know, the, 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 nothing, nothing's guaranteed even, even with the, that amount of crazy short on, uh, on a $8 billion stock. It's like, what are, what are they trying to accomplish here? So I think there's going to be some fundamental news coming here. Uh, I don't know what it is. I can't tell you what it is, but I think it will drive a GameStop much higher and those shorts will probably have to cover. And maybe like like uh, Citron Research said, once we get back to forty fifty dollars, you'll be interested in shorting, and then he'll open a short position. And I think that will just drive the price higher. To be honest, I think there's going to be more uh, shorts to come. I think there will be. I think there's going to be more shorts to to squeeze higher. If that's if that's if they're if they're really to be honest, that's stupid. But again, we'll we'll see. You know, maybe maybe I'm wrong. Anyways, let's continue. So nothing has happened on Market Cipher. I saw some questions about this indicator that I use. So this is called Wave Edge, right? I don't know why I have two open here, but uh, essentially this allows you or allows me to see smart money buying uh, on whichever time frame I want. Uh, it's usually associated with tops and lows. It doesn't guarantee picking the bottom or picking the lows. In some cases it does. Uh, it was initially designed for Bitcoin, but I also use it for my stocks as well, right? It allows me to see what smart money is doing, you know, on in, in big rallies, you know, smart money will tend to unload positions, but it isn't usually time to top. I usually like to pay attention to the buying because when someone buys something, uh, things tend to go up afterwards, right? People buy things for it to go up and to make money, but they can sell for multiple reasons. They can sell for tax purposes, they could sell to take profits, they could sell even maybe to open certain small short positions. So, but for GME here, uh, I, I mean, you, if, if I was paying attention, it, paying attention to it, uh, specifically on this day, I guess, April, April, 2024, you could see some smart buddy buying. So I like to focus on the smaller time frames right now for this intra intraday, you know, trading price action. So 
looks like we got some buying here after this big drop and then another big drop here and then we got some more significant buying once we had a wick down and then we just saw some buying here uh last couple days right on uh, june 18. so that's why i said this target that i had down here may not get hit right it may not get hit and it's it's not a guarantee that it will get hit because if it's just so bullish and there's just so many people buying Right, there's just so many buyers that we won't we won't reach these levels and what's going to happen is this is just going to end up being a huge rally towards the upside and i don't want to get too many people too excited right because i don't know when this will happen right it could I, I i could not tell you what's what would be the reason and when will be the reason for us to go much higher in in the medium to short term I know Roaring Kitty has been tweeting some pictures, right, and stuff like that, and hinting that certain dates could be of importance, right? But we'll have to see. We'll have to see, right? All right. Now I want to talk about also like uh, I I I did a post on on Reddit like yesterday for like a, a video that I posted, and someone was really upset, and I can get where they're coming from, you know. They said they've been holding it for the last three years. They think all these posts about uh, being patient and, you know, over time you'll be rewarded is BS. And if you get your timing wrong, yeah, you could, you could, you'll, you may never get your money back, right? If you buy the tops like this and you FOMO and you, you get the, the frenzy buying and I, I got to buy here, you know, I, everyone's getting in, everyone's been getting in since a buck, two bucks. It's at 400, 100. I don't care. I want in. And then they buy, right? They, they go in with half their stack or their whole stack and their life savings. And then it drops. It drops like a, a rock and it goes down 93, 60%. Who knows, right? That's not the way to do it, right? That's using your emotions and trading. And that's that's why I try to do these videos to help people and like, uh, you know, kind of give you some good entries in the short to medium term. That's why I think, I, I that's why I'm opening positions down here. And you should only invest what you're willing to lose, right? Because if you're gonna, if you're gonna go in with like life savings, because it, it, to me, like when people put big comments like that, how upset they are about these kinds kinds of stocks and what the, the what what these these price actions have done to them, it's because either they're they 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 invested too much and they've lost too much and they just they would want to put the blame on someone else. But in reality, no one's forcing you to do anything. You got to make those decisions yourself, right? You're pulling the trigger on the on buying these stocks, right? So you gotta you gotta do what what you think is best. And if you think that you know someone else is forcing you, you're wrong, right? You're lying to yourself because you're making the, these decisions. So, anyways, hopefully this this helps you guys that are watching these videos. I really appreciate the support. You guys have uh, given me an incredible amount of views these recent uh, <laughs> couple of days or like recent week and uh, gained a significant amount of subscribers. So thank you so much, guys. But yeah, that's that's basically my two cents. I'm going to be posting a description on how to understand this data as well. All right. So if you open open BB terminal and you get it and you look up how, uh, you know, to get all this data here. And then you look at the, the dark, the net short volume versus positions for GME, then you want to probably understand how it works. I'm going to be posting the short, where, where did it go? The short, oh, I got to close this. There we go. The short volume represents the aggregate volume secured. I, I, I'm going to post the description on how to understand this and in the description so you guys can read it. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Uh, what's important to note is higher short sale volume tends to lead to abnormal positive returns. So when there's too many shorts, it's a squeeze, right? <laughs> so that's, that's that's basically how it works. But uh, yeah, I guess I guess they haven't closed or they're creating synthetic shorts. So maybe we will see a significant move towards the upside in the in the coming weeks and months. Anyways, hopefully this you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you guys had a good Juneteenth for the for you uh, fellow Americans that are you know Enjoying this holiday, and uh, I'll catch you guys after the market closed tomorrow. Have a good day. Have a good evening.